Sup, John? It's your boy, Mike. I'm back from ARX Arkansas Retro Expo. We had an amazing time. Really good trip. Uh, this was the first year of the convention. Arkansas Picker put on the convention. This is his first time running a convention. It was his first rodeo. And uh, he did an amazing job uh, for expectations. I mean, I was expecting maybe to swap with some vendors and, you know, do a little bit. I went as a vendor to sell uh, meet up with some friends, you know, it wasn't too far. It's a six hour drive from Houston. Uh, you know, so it wasn't like a crazy drive. Uh, it was definitely doable and, uh, got the chance to go to Arkansas, go to see retro Rick's game point and, uh, go to the convention. So I had a really good time. I'll definitely be back next year. Uh, I can't wait. Actually, uh, we had such a good time this year and I think next year is just going to be even better once the word gets out there how fun it was. Um, so the trip, uh, you know, Friday, we left really early because uh, I wanted to go to Retro Rick's shop, which is, I think it's in Conway, Arkansas. So it's a little north of Little Rock. And that's actually another hour onto the drive. So it was like maybe about seven hours to get there. Uh, went to Retro Rick's Game Point. Didn't get to spend a ton of time or film a lot, but uh, did get to uh, check it out. I picked up a few things. The store was really good. It's amazing. It is big, but in person, in video, it just looks like massive, but it wasn't as big in person. Like everything's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's not as uh, spread out as it looks on camera, I guess, but it was really cool to go in person uh, and just see, I mean, I've watched so many videos from that store from even before when Retro Rick bought it, you know, when he was just game hunting there and the whole, you know, when he bought the, bought the store. So it was really cool to see that he wasn't there. Uh, did get to talk to the employees. He had like really cool employees. They were really, really funny, really cool. Uh, so shout out to uh, the crew at Retro Rick's Game Point. Uh, and a little secret, if you do make a trip up there, right up the street, there's this place that sells uh, fried pies. And um, it's like a burger shop. I don't even know what it's called, honestly, what the name of the restaurant is. But if you, you'll see it if you go to a shop. It's right up the street. And uh, man, they had, they had these... Uh, fried pies, like fried cherry pies. And I'm used to like little hand sized ones that you get at the gas station. Man, these suckers were like huge, so good, piping hot, like fresh fried. It was really good. So like uh, I went with Nate and me and Nate were both talking about, oh yeah, we're going back, but like just so we can go get some more of those fried pies. It's like a total secret in Conway. I can't believe nobody's talked about it. Uh, I'll try to post a picture of it right here. Um, so we went to the store. Then uh, we had to kind of fight traffic to get back to Hot Springs, which was unfortunate because it, it took a little bit longer. But we did get there on Friday night for a uh, load-in. And uh, the load-in was at the convention center or in the hotel, Hotel Hot Springs. And uh, it's kind of in a ballroom. I would say it was pretty small for a convention, like a small size convention. Very similar to a really rad weekend uh, in Florida, like a hotel con. But... Uh, I would say there's probably 25, 30 vendors, uh, you know, booths and uh, different vendors. Some vendors had like bigger booths. I had a little single booth and um, we we're uh, down in the back corner next to Adventure Coats. He was my neighbor. Uh, he's a YouTuber and um, he lives in Arkansas as well. So uh, got set up and then um, just hung out at the hotel. Uh, the hotel's awesome. The bar downstairs was really good. There was a live live music and the food the food there was awesome like the food out of the out of the hotel was like really good so we just ate there crashed out and the next morning had breakfast the breakfast was awesome too at the hotel and then uh went into the convention and as soon as i got there it wasn't even open yet it, i was still trying to get set up and it was already like crazy with trades um uh, and stuff like that so really uh shout out to uh clint and Eric, they were two of the volunteers there that were helping out. They helped, helped load in and everything. And uh, they brought a bunch of trades. They saw what I had on, on setup day. They brought a bunch, bunch of trades. So the trades were insane. Um, uh, Eric was trying to trade up to get the NES Deluxe set. So he ended up taking that home. Um, and he traded some really expensive items. I got the Hylian Shield 2DS. Uh, Mighty Final Fight, which 
this is my second copy in a week of Mighty Final Fight. And uh, Mark, my buddy Mark, was like joking that like he, I'm pretty, he's pretty sure I've had that game five times. That used to be the hardest. That was the, like when I was completing my Capcom set. That was the last game that I got, and it was one of the hardest games to find. Uh, the one that I, the one that I got for my Capcom set was uh, from a Piggly Wiggly. It was a rental copy, but yeah, Mighty Final Fight's super hard to find game, and I've had two this week and sold two this week. So uh, I didn't, I didn't get to keep that one. That ended up selling. But that was really good because uh, it there was a, there was a, I met a lot of people that were going after NES full sets like probably three people, I think you know if you're going for a full set you're gonna go to conventions but yeah I was happy for the guy to get um, Mighty Final Fight to finish it or not finish but get one step closer to finishing his NES set, um, and then um, yeah I got the Hylian Shield he also traded me a copy of Lunar on Sega CD and um, Battletoads versus Double Dragons. And I really wanted to keep that, um, but uh, that one sold as well, so, but that's okay. Um, it's not like my mo like a, a must have game for me. So it was all good to sell it. I also got Adventures of Lolo 3. Uh, so yeah, shout out to Eric. He had like really big trades. Oh, and then like one of my favorite things was uh, he had, uh, he traded me a Turbo Everdrive and also the uh, GDEMU for the Dreamcast. So that was like a huge trade. That was like before the con even started. Um, that was big. And then a huge pickup. Um, the uh, Pick and Preacher. Pick and Preacher. I was trying to remember his name. So Pick and Preacher was there. We were talking about uh, our buddy uh, Tyler from my retro life and uh, he was down in Houston. He went to my local store, uh, we're in classic video games. And um, so we were just talking about that, but he had some really, really nice uh, Game Boy boxes. So I got to pick those up and that's kind of something, if I see it, if I see Game Boy cardboard and it's a game I had as a kid, like I have to get it. So uh, thanks to him for uh, getting those and giving me the hookup on, uh, on those Game Boy cardboards. Um, yeah, other than that, oh, my shirt. Uh, this is from uh, one of the sponsors of the event was Prestige Merch. And uh, Britton is uh, the guy who designs these shirts. And um, really awesome. This is like really awesome shirt and uh, Metal Gear Solid. This is the only, he had some really sick shirts. He had some Silent Hill uh, 2 shirts. He had a Terminator 2 shirt. Really cool designs. And um and uh, but this was the only one he had left. I didn't really even find his booth until towards the end, and this is what he had left in my size. So, picked this up. But uh, I'm gonna order some stuff online from him, it was really cool. Um, other than that, uh, um, Retro Rick showed up like a little bit, uh, you know, halfway after the crowd kind of cleared out, I guess. And uh, Retro Rick showed up at the convention, he made his rounds, he picked up a few things at the booth. It was good to see him. It's kind of crazy, though, that, like, I run into, you know, somebody like him. Like, I saw him in California. Now I went to Arkansas, so I'm in his state. I've seen him in Texas at uh, at Retropalooza. And he'll be at um, at the uh, Really Rad Weekend in Florida at the end of the year. So, um, really, you know, Retro Rick's awesome, man. Super nice guy. And uh, really... Uh, just really, you know, he's not fake, man. What you see on the video, he's real. He's like that. Uh, really good guy. So uh, I, it was great to see him there. Hopefully next year he has a booth or, you know, can plan plan around it and be there. But yeah, man, uh, had an awesome time. Shout out to Brandon Retro Picker. He killed it. You know, he's a YouTuber. He's, you know, a content creator. But he took it really seriously, I think. And I mean, he was, you know, as far as like, people running a convention he was running around checking on everybody making sure everybody was good fixing problems like really put a lot of work in and of course volunteers like clinton eric and there was other volunteers as well uh helping with the front and everything i didn't get to talk to them as much but yeah just uh, a really well-run convention uh and for his first time i thought he did a great job so it was exciting i had no idea what to expect i was just like hey man i always wanted to go to arkansas so I did uh, for a convention, and uh, it was really cool. Also, shout out to Bowman Games, uh, super helpful man, and uh, just a just a solid dude. Uh, one of the best dudes in in retro gaming. Bowman Games was there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I recommend it, man. If you know, whenever 
it gets announced for next year, I'll be trying to get off work and making sure I can go because it was a it was a great time. Um, you know, and I sold really good, but also like I didn't, I don't think I came home with anything. My truck was just as full when I left when I came home as when I left because I ended up picking up so much stuff. So uh, we'll show the pickups now, and then I'll be signing off. But yeah, that's all I got to say for uh, Arkansas Retro Expo. All right, peace out. All right, so I'm gonna get into the pickups. I got a. Uh, I'll just start in it now. I got a uh, Turbo Everdrive. Uh, always wanted to get one of these. This is a, it's got a PC engine sticker on it, but they're the same one either way. I guess it's yeah, compatible with both. I think there's a new version of this that came out, but uh, I've always wanted to have one of these uh, for turbo graphics. I did pick up a system. I was really excited to get a system with the back plate. These are always missing and it had all original uh, controller, power supply and RF adapter. So I always like seeing complete turbo graphics. I uh, got these uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse fun packs on the trip. Uh, one thing I got traded was the GD EMU, uh, which is the uh, optical drive emulator for the Dreamcast. I love Dreamcast. I had it on launch, but I can't stand the load times, and so I never play it. So I picked that up, and then I traded for um, I traded for this um, Dreamcast lot. I actually got four controllers. I got some more controllers in a bag in the back. But uh, I'm going to clean this Dreamcast up, mod it, and uh, put the optical drive emulator on there. And uh, I think it already came loaded with the with the games. It already had the memory card with the games. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Super Nintendo. Most of this was, almost all of this was stuff that got traded to me. Um, this was the last trade of the day. Uh, pretty cool. Uncharted Waters, New Horizons. Um, that's a pretty cool trade, um, uncommon, uh, Super Nintendo game, and then, um, I got Final Fight 3, kind of messed up label, Chrono Trigger, uh, picked up Super Metroid, I got a bunch of Super Mario Worlds, Zeldas, Street Fighter 2s, just stuff that sells, and this came in on a trade, I thought it was kind of cool, Scooby-Doo Mystery. Um, these, uh, actually came in the mail, so they're just kind of mail pickups, but, uh, Back to the Future 2 on Super Nintendo. And Mobile Suit Gundam Wing Endless Duel. Uh, you might not have ever seen these games on Super Nintendo, it's because they didn't ever come out on the system. These were Japanese only. Super Famicom games, and uh, I don't know, I don't really like homebrews or hacks, but uh, these are English translations, and uh, this game is really, really good on, on Super Nintendo, and I love uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, I think I have it on the PS1, uh, it, it's like a fighting game, this is a really cool uh, fighting game that I just, you know, I wanted to play these, I like them, I don't really mess with homebrews or hacks, but uh, I just wanted to pick these up, and they finally came in the mail. There's my poster from uh, Arkansas Retro Expo. I got the uh, Home Run King from Mr. Pac-Man case. I just had to get it. I mean, I don't know why I never had this game. It's got freaking Jeff Bagwell, Houston Astros on the cover. So I uh, had to pick this up. That's a pretty cheap game. Uh, on S Nintendo, I didn't grab everything that I got traded, but these are some of the better trades I got. Uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Lolo 3. Um, these three I picked up at Retro Rick Shop, uh, Muppet Adventure, Bo Jackson Baseball, Back to the Future 2 and 3. These are, like, just uncommon. I never see them around. Uh, I got a bunch of Mario 3s and Mario 2s. Uh, this guy traded in a bunch of, like, he same guy that traded in the Super Mario Worlds. Um, he traded in a bunch of uh, Mario stuff. I got this in on trade from uh, Eric. Uh, super sick trade lunar on Sega CD. It's got the foam manual complete. That's really nice. Handhelds. Uh, this is a modded Game Boy Advance SP. It's got the backlit screen. The screen is crooked, so I'm probably gonna take it apart and redo it. Uh, this was like one of my favorite trades. Somebody traded me. They had needed a silver Game Boy Advance SP, 
And he's like, would you trade for a Game Boy Advance? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> I'll do that trade all day. And this is like super clean battery cover. Really nice Game Boy Advance. I uh, got this in on trade as well. It's a uh, 3DS XL, the red one. Uh, it's kind of, you know, kind of scratched up. I'm going to try to clean it up, but uh, I'll get that. Another trade from uh, Eric. He did all the big trades. This is so sick. The Hylian Shield new 2ds xl uh super clean like very clean it's got the stylus everything um really really cool piece uh the 2ds xl so that was a really really big trade um got a bunch of nintendo powers from mr retro wolf 88 um they're kind of you know conditions kind of there but uh all of them have the posters so i just picked up you know, I kind of like the issues 1 through 75. So, especially with the posters, uh, makes it worth it. These bad boys right here, I got from the Pick and Preacher. Amazing quality. Like, super clean. Super nice. Uh, put them in the box protectors to keep them nice. But uh, these four games are four childhood games that I had on the Game Boy. And so... Uh, you know, I've had these games. I had them originally, probably threw the boxes out back in the day. And I've had them before, but never this clean. And so, really happy to get these. Uh, these are going to go for the personal collection for sure. Uh, so, yeah, just these are, I'm just super stoked about those. I had to get those. And then, um, this is a really cool Game Boy stand made by Retro Beard. Adam was out there. Uh, Adam and Heather were out there. Uh, Retro Beard selling his signs and stuff and so this is just a really cool uh game boy holder it holds the system and then you can put like four games in the little slots there but uh yeah really cool uh i just kind of got it for like a display but uh i like it so these are uh the pickups that i kept there was other stuff uh other trades and stuff that i'll talk about in the i guess i probably already talked about it in the video this will probably go at the end is the pickups but this is the stuff that i kept so uh, really great time and uh, looking forward to the next convention, Retropalooza in Arlington. All right, peace out.